very good health and uh, hope that everyone is already to start with our classes next week. Um, Hello, uh, can you all hear me clearly? Yes, Prof Aziz, we can hear uh, you. I'm just, oh, yes. uh, yeah, we can see you now. <coughs> you can see me now. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm uploading my slide. Uh, can you all see the slide? Uh, we are waiting. It's loading now, Prof. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I will introduce you first, Prof. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, okay. you want to upload yourself? Uh, if you upload, then I have to say next, next, next. Huh? No, so no, it's okay. Upload. It's okay. Uh, I, I think it's better for you to handle, uh, to control so that you then, know. I think it's better is coming from yours uh, yeah. so that you can control your slides, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Prof. So uh, I'll just start, Prof. Um, so assalamualaikum and good evening to everyone. Welcome to our third UM Star series where we have sessions with our very own UM Stop Management. So my name is Safiya Omar. I am from the Academic Enhancements and Leadership Development Center or everybody known that as EDAC. Today, our topic for the series is uh, understanding our students. And thus, um, I would like to welcome uh, Professor Engineer Dr. Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahman, our very own Deputy Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, uh, to present his um, presentations today. So, welcome, Prof. Aziz. We are very, very lucky to have you. I'm so grateful that you actually agree for the sessions, Prof. Welcome. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. How are you? Uh, uh, so, um, okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I, I, I have about probably about uh, 20 slides. Uh, so I'll take uh, about 20 minutes or so to, to just to present the slides. And then there are some one or two um, uh, sections, uh, I mean, activities that we can do to reflect uh, about our own understanding, including my understanding about who our students and, uh, and what they are and, and what's their background and things like that. And, and probably uh, what I'm going to do, if you all don't mind, uh, I have your names here. So if we can, uh, if I may, uh, call some names from the list here and ask for your opinion. Uh, is that all right, everyone? It should be all right. It should be all right, Prof. Right, I right? think we can't wait <laughs> for that <laughs> session to come. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, so, so that's that's basically uh, how how I want to go about this. Huh? So, um, so let me go here. Uh, so, I hope uh, you all can see this. So, uh, when uh, uh, Azar called me uh, and asked me, uh, Prof, uh, would you want to um, provide a, a webinar series uh, on something to do with your with your portfolio? So, we thought, and uh, I said that. Well, uh, let me see. Uh, whether uh, this this title, understanding our students, you know, um, our students are different, uh, meaning for different people. So uh, I was lucky to to you know I was the dean for a couple of years uh, before that I was a deputy dean, and I looked after academics. So uh, I was lucky to to work with students, and and I thought today uh, we show we we will share those experience together with everyone uh, so that uh, see whether we, we have some common understanding or there are something that uh, I can share today as a Deputy Vice Chancellor for at least the uh, last two years. Huh? So that's, that's an idea. So uh, why? Because uh, for us to deliver uh, good uh, teaching and learning, I think understanding who are our clients is very important. That's why I, I chose this, uh, this, this title today. Eh? Now, um, basically, I think this is not, uh, so today's session will be very light section. Uh. So uh, majority of our students, uh, especially our undergraduate students, they, they are about 20 plus. Uh, many of them uh, probably just, uh, just left school, uh, very fresh. They come from different background uh, and a different lifestyle. I think this, everybody knows about this. But one thing that the majority of us may have overlooked is that uh, many of them mature here. 
in this university and uh, they are at their prime of their adulthood so they become so when they come here as kids and, and when they leave they they become um, beautiful uh, men and women eh? so that four years they are here it is not only the classroom that they go through but they also go through a big change in their life as well their physical life their maturity their thinking their ambition they their friends and everything changes so basically when we have them here for four or five years for three four five years so we are also they are also parallelly going through a big change in their life whether they realize or whether we realize this is what we see uh, here so this is a very important thing for us to realize you know why because with these changes uh, where they transform themselves from uh, school children uh, senior school person to become someone who is uh, who is to be employed will become husband and wives so that's a big change and during this change they got to uh, uh, okay can you still see me uh so they got to uh, face a lot of things so if we understand this fact i think our teaching and learning our interaction with them will be much much more better i think that's that's my uh, thinking so probably uh, we can ask uh, uh, susanna to to comment on this do you agree with this okay, susanna i don't know uh, but koi da ile raja you there sir sabia can can you can you hear me eh sabia uh yes prof i can hear you maybe fara we can ask fara okay fara is here as well eh fara you there fara i can fara, see is it faradina are you calling faradina faradina yes faradina i i I'm, i'm going according to the names here no yeah Uh, this evening i think two two way interaction would be very good la yes bro understand yeah. otherwise bro. yeah who is that this is paradina para you you agree with me uh, that they they may sure here they go through a big transformation we may not see physically every day but they go through a big uh, emotional change uh, big big transformation actually while they are in the university do you agree with that uh, para I totally agree with you prof especially um now we are in the still in the pandemic situation mm. there's a lot of changes need to be done not mm. just physically but also mentally so i'm yeah. with you Harunisa you as a uh, as a as a uh, college master do you see this transformation when you receive them in the first year and they mature into four years Yes doctor i i see that Oh, this is a different Karunisa. Uh, so, <laughs> no, uh, this is really, uh, really, uh, you know. So, so this is something that we need to uh, understand about our student first. Behind every face that we have in our class, there is a transformation that is taking place behind, behind them. So, we, we ourselves as students have gone through, but we may not remember because we go through as a as a fact of life, you know. But this is what happens without they themselves realizing they change. the way they talk will change the way they dress will change the way they allocate their time will change their friends the circle of friends will change the food they eat will change the interaction with the family will change uh, some some they will reduce the interaction with the family the friends become more important and these are the things that we need to realize in the first place okay now um okay so um so uh, the next one is um, uh, Yeah, let me see so now um basically what we are doing is uh, let me let me ask this question to someone when somebody asks you this question say for example maybe li ailing uh, are you there li ailing are you there yes i'm there okay where are you from which faculty i am from the faculty of creative arts creative arts okay oh i see uh okay lee eh? how are you i'm fine thank you <laughs> sorry okay. i have connectivity problems so i'm using this from my phone so i can use my data instead of my internet connection okay, like no, no problem no problem see eh? when somebody asks you uh how was your university life what would be your answer 
my university life as a student, you mean? Yeah, as a student. Well, I guess that's a very interesting question for me because I've experienced university in two different countries. Uh -huh. So I would say it could be it's a mix of fun, yeah. adventure, uh, I guess forming lifelong connections, right? Uh, with people that you meet and you do things with and that you spend a lot of time together with. Okay. And I guess also learning new things that you probably would not have learned, you know, if you were not in a situation where you're exposed to a lot of people that you do not expect to meet, you know, in your, in the world that you grew up in. So I guess that would be what is the life is like to me. Okay, precisely. See, when we ask them uh, what they will say, oh, uh, fantastic experience, they will relate it to a particular activity, they were related to a particular incident, they were related to a particular lecturer, they were related to a particular uh, course they went through. So nobody will say that, oh, we went through a good program, very rarely. So what essentially we are providing them is an experience actually, you know. So it's, that's why it's called experiential learning actually. We provide opportunity for them to gain experience uh, So university is a place where we provide them an opportunity to gain experience and we are part of the uh, uh, system to provide that experience to them. So it's not just content, uh, it is not just uh, finishing a program, but everything that's surrounding it. Many of them will say, oh, uh, our study group was the best, you know, they will remember the study group. Oh, we used to uh, create a work in the colleges, say, for example. So it is that experience that will talk to you about when you meet them after graduation, you try this after this. So, what I'm the point that I'm trying to make here is that we got to create this experience for them in the classroom. If it is a wonderful experience, that's very good. And I don't think we should be part of this nightmarish experience for them. Uh, so that's that's the point here. So whatever we do, whatever that we do, we should also reflect. You know, I'm providing this exercise. I'm providing this this activity i'm giving this feedback and my feedback is going to create negative uh, perception in their mind am i being overly critical am i building them so i think if we have this uh, thinking process i think our teaching and learning and our interaction and, and, and our value to them will be much more better uh, in my opinion i don't know whether uh, that is an agreeable fact or whatever but uh, can we can we have uh, Kishant? Uh, Kish, uh, probably Marini. Marini is it? Marini is is that is there something? Yes, bad? yes, yes, Prof. Yeah, that's Marini. <laughs> yeah, Marini. so agree, Prof, with you. Huh? So so agree. So can you can you relate an experience of yours? Are you are you uh, where are you from? Which, uh, which? Uh, I'm geography. So can you okay geography probably you have some uh, some field visits and all that maybe yes yes definitely that that is most uh, memorable things that we will remember forever <laughs> precisely you no know, because my wife comes from microbiology from you every time we are talking about a visit to the collecting samples she never talk about classrooms or haze or whatever but yeah it is they create so I think. Yeah, yeah. That's what's very important, betul tak, Marini, kan? Yeah, betul, sure. Uh, yeah, so so uh, this is the point that I'm trying to make from this uh, slide. Anybody else want to comment anything on this? What about Mama Sharil? Shazril, sorry. Mama Shazril? Yes, Prof. Where are you from, sir? Which, uh, uh, Faculty of Engineering, Prof. Shazril, Faculty of Engineering. Macam mana saya tak kenal pula ni? I'm a civil engineer, GKA. Bila, bila masuk? Uh, last year, bro. Just joined uh, August last year. Oh, I see. I see. Sorry, I, 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 I didn't get an opportunity to see I, you. I think we have, we have met uh, twice, I think, uh, during my PhD. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, ah, this is Sajdil. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Australia. Okay. I graduated from Australia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know we had yes. this uh, online, very tough online discussion, right or not? Yes, uh, that's the first thing that you did uh, right after you uh, become the dean for the for the faculty. Was it useful session? Was it, it is, a useful it is, Yeah, it is. It was a very wonderful experience. It was very. Uh, I mean, uh, I think all students, especially students, need that. Uh, 
uh, and I think uh, you have done it tremendously well mm. for that for that purpose because you want to seek for our problems and then uh, yeah. uh, and we discuss for the solutions for for the for the problems as well, which which is good. Uh, I think uh, which is I'm trying to apply the same thing to my students as well, so so that we can continue that that the continuity of the knowledge is there. And then, uh, so that we can, we can you know, you can, we can pass on the, um, the, the that good morale, that good uh, behavior to our students. Thank you very much, Prof. Just for everybody's uh, information, what happened was when I took uh, took over as the dean, so I, I I I connected with all our all our PhD students who were studying overseas then, including Mohsharia, and we we uh, we discussed and we we said that uh, you got to do this and you got to do that. You come back. There is a there is a place for you. So we 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 had that discussion. Now obviously that as uh, you have benefited from that, uh, I can see right. Were you were you intimidated by that uh, by that uh, conversation then? Uh, not at all, Prof. Because I I am I am I think I think uh, I I I've been uh, wanting that kind of uh, interaction with the dean because as you know in Malaysia we have. This kind of very huge gap between the uh, the top management and the um, the, um, the the normal staff, and I think it's still there uh, up to now. And then uh, I think you have done you, you have uh, basically reduced the gap, and so that we the students we didn't feel like being yeah. you know, being uh, ignored by by the by the top management. Thank okay. you. For everybody, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this was not uh, planned. Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> not at all. So just that it happened uh, uh, accidentally. But I think this is a good uh, uh, sharing session. Eh? Now uh, let's move on. Uh, that, so so we, we we provide them. Okay. Uh, so therefore, if we if we can provide them with uh, real life examples and all that, they will appreciate it. Okay. Now. Um, so now let's go to a little bit more boring uh, type. Huh? So this is okay. A GP, uh, we collect uh, data uh, for from each individual so that we can follow them. Huh? So we have this data. So we collected data last year. Now, uh, just for your information, uh, for last year's batch, uh, 30, 32% of the these are some examples of uh, data that we collect. Huh? Father in private sector, 32%. Mother, housewife, 38%. Now, interestingly, majority of our students, almost 64 of our students, percent of our students, come from a family of four to six. Now, why this is important? Now, this is important now, uh, online session. So when they go home uh, uh, at the comfort of their house, basically they have siblings, you know, they have many siblings in their house where they may fight for resources online and, and all that. So when we conduct our online classes now, uh, all, all of course uh, we talk okay they have problems we provide them with this and that but many of them sharing rooms uh, with their siblings many of them will share resources many of them will share uh, data plan uh, many of them will share income of the parents you know so they have these issues uh, back home so uh, that's why sometimes when you when you assign them with assignments and all that when they come back to us this is something that you may want to be mindful that they may come from a big family and all that. Now, another thing is uh, majority of the students, about 24% of the students, they come from Selangor nearby. Now, what does it mean? It means that during weekend, many of them have the tendency to go home, go back home. So if we expect some of them, uh, they go home and study, but some of them may not. So Many of them may, may have difficulties in, uh, in uh, coming to classes and, and all that uh, on weekends. That's why you see in campus uh, on weekends we are quite empty. So that's what we are trying to do something about this to keep them in the campus. Of course, the PKP came over and we had difficulties in, uh, in maintaining them. Because by having them campus on weekends, actually we want to build their, their sasya, the other aspects of their life, you know, playing games and activities and all that but many of them what they do is they go through their classes five days and weekends they go home so sometimes we are not able to provide that experiential learning because of this fact also so when we have activities on weekend they may not turn up 
Uh, Assalamualaikum Prof, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, are you meaning to show your presentation slides or not actually? Yeah. Are you not? Are you not seeing it? Ah? Yeah, we're not. We're not seeing. Oh, okay. I, I think you stop sharing your slides. Is it slow? Okay. Yes. Wait, ah. Let me see. Mm -hmm. How do I share this? You uh, saw it just now, right? Yeah, we saw it just now, and then it was stop sharing. There is a, if you notice, there's a button that can, ah, uh, yes, now now we see it. Thank you, Prof. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. All right, sorry, uh, everyone. That's why we need the moderator. Thank you very much. So this is, uh, this is, this is what it is. And, and, B, and, and B40, about 60%, uh, 60, 60% uh, is about B40. So we have large uh, number of these uh, B40s, that's why, Sometimes even if you raise fifty dollars fees, or if you even charge ten dollars, it's it's difficult for them. So we may think that because we are salaried, and we may think that what is fifty ringgit for this big education, but for them it's something else, you know, because they are sharing with their 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 spillings. Uh, probably their scholarship, uh, which they receive from PTPTN, just enough to just barely enough to pay for their colleges and uh, and also our fees. So they don't have this extra money, you know. So probably the parents will give them $100 or so. But $100 means spending it per day, but the expenditure is much more. That's why some of them may even uh, pick up a part-time job in KL, you know, delivering items and all that. So B40, uh, yes, we have uh, support for them, PTPTN, but to live in KL, which is actually highest in, in compared to any other place in, in the country, they have this difficulty. So many of them may go for part-time job and all that. So why I'm saying this, in combination, we are looking at the students, when they are out from your class, they have a lot of other activities. They may work, you know, they may, they may, they may be on the budget. They're not able to do certain things that you expect them to do. They may not have money to buy some of the resources. Uh, in fact, they may not have money to print their reports that we expect them to do. You know, if you ask them to print their reports, some of them are not able to print, you know, uh, if, if it is a color and all that. So when we do things, we got to be mindful of this, you know, uh, not to say that we limit ourselves from doing things, but take this into consideration. If it can be submitted through email, let it be email. It's example, when we... When we go online, some of the lecturers want to see their faces. Now, when you see their faces, it means higher data usage. So that is also something that many students cannot afford, especially when you are sh sharing this data with your siblings. Huh? Your, 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 your. So, so this is something that we need to about our students. So maybe I can ask some feedback from um, someone here, uh, maybe Yagzan, Mama Yagzan, where are you from, sir? Mama Yagzan, are you there? What about Mustafa? Mustafa bin Bukhari? Okay, Maman. Nazrul? Nazu Railin bin Abdullah. Are you there? Okay, Nurdina, I'm sure it's there. Nurdina, okay, Shafika, are you there? Shafika, no Shafika. I think, I think Nurdina is uh, talking. Yeah, Nurdina. Hello. It's okay. Uh, we go on. Uh, Norazima? Norazima. Uh, Norazima. Adega? Shahira? Assalamualaikum, Prof. Assalamualaikum. Yes, I'm Shahira here. Where are you from, Shahira? I'm from UMC set. Okay, Shahira. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, uh, do, do, do you agree with the, uh, this background business, especially 
uh, with your diploma students? Definitely, I would say that I agree because um, we here encounter the same situation yeah, when it involves uh, the students. Um, we cannot expect them to be, uh, I would say, to be participative as how they do it during the face-to-face -face learning session. Yeah, we need to be very understanding towards the student in this time during the pandemic. Yes, yes. I think, I think th this is... Uh, Okay, let's let's move on. Uh, uh, Sophia, can see me? Yeah, can see my slides. Uh, yes, bro, you can see your slide very clear. Another item is also um, we go to see a uh, different background. You know, many of them, uh, some of them come from boarding school. If they come from boarding school, they are quite they adapt to this place quite quite easily. Some they come from daily school, especially at the early stage. You know, we have seen matriculation, STPM diploma, and many uh, have a language proficiency. And we do also have OKU students, you know. Uh, some OKU, you cannot see them. Some have uh, uh, learning difficulties and all that. So, but they do quite well, actually. 75% of them do uh, between 3 to 4 CGPA. So, this also um, help, help us to, uh, not to say we are going to have a two different system in the class, but, but knowing uh, consciously that they have different kind of students in my class, especially when you are teaching first years and all that. For example, matriculation is a very structured uh, kind of, uh, uh, they learn the same thing, matriculation, STPM, in terms of one thing, they learn the same thing. But they come through a very structured uh, system. STPM, a little bit, is more structured also now, lately, not like my time, but it is less structured than, structured than matriculation. Therefore, the students, when they come here, they certain in certain circumstances they may not be able to do, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that they are they are they are they are not good. That's why many of these students when they come to second year they will normalize. Especially in engineering, what we saw was that first year there is a marked difference between matriculation, STPM diploma, and all that in their in their performance, in how they behave in the class, the way they participate in the class, and all that. But after second year onward, they they become uh, normalized. You know, majority become uh, similar. So this is also something that we need to be mindful and we need to assist and help to integrate. So when we say integration, we only talk about races, we only talk about you know gender, but we got to be also looking at integrating them from different background. So matriculation, STPM, where they have a different uh, kind of a mindset sometimes. So this is also something that I would like to uh, stress to my colleagues here, majority of them, lecturers, uh, if you can, try to be, uh, you know, ask the class, where are you from, uh, are you able to do it, and when you make your groups and all that, you may want to consider this uh, so that your teaching and learning will be effective. All right, is there any question uh, at this moment? Other? Okay. Uh, Nurjana, are you, are you able to... Are you, are you able to follow my, uh, what do you call, uh, my, about this background? Do you have any experience? Okay, Tapa. What about O Lixin? O Lixin, is it? O Lixian. Uh, hi, hi, Prof. Actually, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, maybe. Sorry, I, I, maybe I pronounce your name wrongly. Uh, apologies. Uh, where are you from? Which faculty? Yeah, uh, so I'm Lysian from uh, FOM, Pediatric Department. Ah, Pediatric Department. Oh, I see. Yeah. Interesting. I was wondering where is the medical, uh, because medical uh, stuff, they, 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 they like uh, this kind of uh, talks and all that. So uh, can you share your experience about having uh, this different background? Yeah, Maybe. I'm actually not clinical based. I'm actually a DS. Okay. And I just joined a few months ago, so I don't quite have a lot of experience on that. Mm. So would like to know more through this session. Well, are you? Are you? Fr uh, I, I mean, you worked elsewhere before or something? No. Uh no. I just freshly graduated from PhD. Oh, I see. Where? Where? Which? Where? Which? Which? Uh, where? Where do you? Where uh, do you from? yeah. I did my PhD in UM itself in the same department. Same department. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's great. Uh, happy learning. But do you see the point or not? What I'm trying to say? Yeah, I'm trying to. I think you're saying like trying to accommodate the diversity amongst the learners. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and I think 
I think, uh, you know, some of us may just go there, open your slides and start delivering, but without understanding the dynamics of the class. So I think if you know your client, uh, mm. I think you can actually uh, do a lot more better. Yeah. Yeah. I remember last week I heard of this uh, line, this quote saying that we should teach the students, not teaching the topic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fantastic. I think this is the saying of the day. La. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. It's good to see young, uh, young uh, staff like you having such a, such a philosophical uh, and, you know, good, good. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we meet all of this. Okay. Uh, now, um, next one is, uh, uh, okay. And this is uh, because I'm a GP, I know what's happening in the colleges and all that. Many of them sleep uh, very late. An average five to six hours daily, about and about one percent of them smoke. Small percentage of them taking vitamin or supplements. Okay, why I'm showing this? We we in 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 HEB we collect this uh, data. Okay, now why this is important? Because you see, uh, typically in a normal time, they go back about five o'clock. Okay, they go to their college about five o'clock, or they go to their place, and then five to seven maybe they eat or they play some games and all that. And then they will start uh, at eight o'clock and they will do tutorials and they will go for some supper. So many of them sleep about one to two am, average five to six hours, you know. So if you find them sleeping in the class, uh, this is very common. Huh? So why I'm telling this is that uh, many of us, uh, 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 including me sometimes, we think that this is my subject is the only subject that they're taking. But many of them are taking many subjects and many of these subjects will have their own um, projects on this that talk online and in in uh, compounded in the college sometimes we also have activities so they, they are very busy actually these students are very busy and sometimes we tell them they are lazy and all that but i think we may want to be very careful when we term them as lazy and all that they have Believe me, under the semester system, and uh, they, they, they struggle a bit, especially if they're doing more than 15 credit hours. Good students may not struggle, but majority of the uh, average students, they struggle. So be mindful of what we are asking them to do, what we are expecting them to do. Of course, there is a minimum, but always be mindful of this uh, time that they will they need to uh, spend on it, even group work. You see, the group work is not the work itself, but the getting the group together is another problem. That's why we we feel very happy. Oh, we assign them group work. But just because you call it a group work and put five people together, the group dynamic may not happen. They struggle. Maybe in the group, only one of them is contributing. So all this is something that you got to know because there are dynamics among them. Some of them are lazy. Some of them lazy in a sense that they don't work in a group. So this is something that we want to be mindful about as well. Eh? All right, is that, is that okay? Is that, uh, uh, is that a fair observation? Raiha, is that a fair observation? Do you think um, the observation is fair now? What about Rodia? Is this Rodia yang saya kenal ke? Alam bina ke? Prof Rodia ke ni? Uh, thank you, Prof. Okay, <laughs> ini, ini, oh, yes, yeah. Yes. My, my research partner dulu. Yes, Rudia. How are you? Uh, 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 fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> do, do, do you agree, you know, about, about this, uh, this, uh, this, this things ni? Budak-budak ni? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Then, uh, kita kena banyak membantu lah, actually. Exactly. Sebab, Uh, saya perhatikan ada masalah juga dari segi setengah lecturer dia bagi loading lebih-lebih. So without thinking that budak-budak student kita ni ada banyak assignment ada ni. Jadi sebenarnya benda tu kena disusun dekat department sendiri. How many assignment kena bagi kan supaya yeah. student ni tidak terbeban. So uh, bila kita buat group group apa yang berlaku adalah dia orang bahagikan kerja. Hmm. So katalah untuk subjek satu ni dia bagi orang ni buat. Subjek dua, subjek dua ni orang ni buat. Jadi bila come to 
kita buat assessment dia tak faham orang lain punya exactly. sedangkan in the class kalau yang group work ni sebenarnya kita nak dia belajar antara satu sama lain because um, biasanya case study kita berbeza-beza so that's a time yang dia kena pay attention jugalah kepada kerja orang lain tu so kita kena banyak prihatin lah saya itu je. Then make, make them happy actually because uh, actually banyak konflik bila kita ngajar dengan berbagai latar belakang, berbagai orang kata apa ni, background tu so kena prihatin sikit lah tu je lah. So yeah. I agree lah apa yang uh, yeah. Prof cakap tu. Yeah true. See what we do yeah. in group. Well, what they normally do, they pecah-pecah. The group dynamic is not taking place. They are not working in group. They actually yeah working individually and combining everything, printing and sending to us. Don't let that happen. Because the whole idea of group work is that so that it's a peer learning. It's a peer learning. They more learn among themselves. But that yes. doesn't happen. So we don't want uh, that to happen. So be mindful of that as well. Okay, kita, kita go to the next one. Now, <clears throat> this is also something that we, you, you, you never know what they have. Now, when they are young, they come here, but many of them, have uh, actually long-term uh, illness as well. Some, they come with diabetics, allergic, um, some other bara juga, you know. Uh, so, what happened is that University Malaya policy, we cannot discriminate, discriminate them uh, by health. If they are qualified academically, we have to take them inclusive. Huh? So, when we take them here, many have this. And during the MCO, uh, they were about thousand over students in the campus. So when we uh, took, uh, you know, this uh, survey, twenty-four percent of them they have this critical anxiety, anxiety, eh? and seventeen percent of them have critical stress. Now this, this, uh, this uh, PKP, this uh, COVID, it's also uh, putting a lot of pressure on the families. Uh, many of them losing job. Uh, many of them not able to provide uh, that that hundred dollars a month to the to the students. So this is affecting them a lot. You know, uh, many of them uh, write to us to withdraw. Many of them write to us for funding. Unfortunately, we don't have that sort of funding to assist everyone. So wherever we can, we try to assist. And uh, and uh, one thing when we when they are staying home, you see, once they come to campus, one year they they are used to the freedom and all that. Once they go back home, there seems to be a lot of problem as well uh, with the parents, uh, with them, and all that. So, ini pun sesuatu yang kita kena fikir juga, especially when we go online. Uh, they also have, have this, this, uh, this, this other, other problems as well. So, um, ini bukan uh, dia boleh gunakan untuk dia antar lambat dan sebagainya, but be mindful of this. Example, uh, January to June, uh, we have uh, 5,305 students coming to our Pusat Kesihatan. Uh, majority uh, female students. Uh, so we, we, we treat them. So they go, they get sick, uh, food, not enough sleep, uh, exam. Especially during the exam, uh, we got so many people coming to our clinic. Stress. And do you know that uh, one of the study that we conducted by some of our colleagues, they say that up to 10, more than 10% of the students may even have uh, suicidal tendencies. So don't take this mental illness and all that. When somebody tell you I'm under stress and all that, don't laugh them off. Lah. So ini adalah sesuatu yang sebenarnya berlaku. Because as you can see earlier, 38% of the parents, father is attached with a uh, private. So now private under this PKP, they are affected a lot. So that may affect the whole family's income, not only income, uh, sometimes family's uh, happiness and all the issues. I at HEP normally frequented by parents and all that. Huh? Uh, so I, I, I just played one incident. Huh? There's one student, uh, I don't want to mention from where. So that student uh, actually uh, failed the subject and he, he was uh, actually terminated. Okay. So terminated because uh, the guy didn't uh, appeal and all that. Because once he's terminated, 
he lose his, uh, his, uh, his bearings, you know. So, he, he didn't appeal. He didn't know that even he can appeal. So, uh, mother was a single mother, came and saw me. Mother was a very uh, touchy and uh, very uh, sad incident. But luckily enough, our colleague, uh, we spoke to them. So, they gave him a second chance. And I think he's, he's doing quite okay. And during that few days, seven or eight days, he slept in one of our room, you know. Uh, so this this kind of things happen. So uh, mental issue is the real issues. If someone says that I have these issues, don't brush them off. They may not be uh, necessarily manipulating us using that as a reason. They may really have an issue. So that's that's what uh, you know um, our experience. That anyone want to add something here? Your experience. Prof, uh, if I may share something with uh, everyone, so I think... Uh, Who's on the line? FND, is it? Eh? It's Hazrino. Oh, Hazrino, yeah, yeah. Uh, So just uh, recently, I just joined UM, I think, and last semester was my first semester teaching. Mm -hmm. Sajid, where are you? I, sorry? Where are you from? Uh, I was born in Penang, and but I live uh, in Kuala Lumpur, Sentul. Which faculty? Which faculty? Type Engineering. Siapa nama? Shazril, Shazril. Muhammad Shazril. Muhammad Shazril. Shazril, okay. Shazril, okay. Sorry, sorry. I, I cannot see. Okay, Shazril. It's okay. It's okay, So, last uh, semester was basically my first time teaching in UM. Mm. And I think I, one of the experience that I had last semester was uh, one of my students. Mm. She had problem with uh, her boyfriend and then uh, relationship problem up to basically involve the university. Um, so I did advise her to focus on, on, on you know, on her study because this is a this is her first semester, mm. and she came from she basically from Borneo from Sabah, mm. and basically she also has a is a B forty family as well. She comes from B forty family, and then I I think I directed her to HCP to the counseling uh, committee. Mm. to seek help from the from the HP in terms of you know in terms of uh, uh, computer or in terms of any zakat or any bantuan that that HP can can offer her. So alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah she 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 managed to pass uh, the semester. Uh, and I uh, and I think uh, I think that that is one of the example where the where the students uh, the student basically. Uh, come from B40 family and then uh, from Sabah, from Borneo, which is very far from 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 here, from Kuala Lumpur, and then and had trouble with, with you know to cope or to to cope with uh, with city style, University Malaya environment as well. So okay. I think that's one of the example that I have uh, for last semester. Okay, interesting. Now I I think I see Sharon Nizam here. Sharon, are you college class? Huh? Sharoniza? Yeah, Bob, yeah. Maybe you are the best person to share with us since you are looking after the Asasi students. Maybe you can tell us about what you go through during the exams and all the, some of the real examples. Uh, in terms okay, well, well, but, uh, in term of what, Bob? In terms of dia punya mental, mental uh, ni lah, masa exam kan, dia punya stress level, how you coping up, what they go through in the colleges and all that. Uh, okay, well, thank you. Uh, I'm like actually uh, uh, have been given the opportunity to look after two batches of a uh, classroom student. Mm. The last one is uh, I can say that I can see they uh, need to attend the physical exam, the face-to-face -face exam, and then the current one is uh, most likely with the online class, uh, online classes. But the intention um, always associated with the classroom uh, student during the exam is quite. Uh, I think they, they all um, uh, competing each other. Most of our uh, passing students uh, are the best students from different type of school before this. So when they are here, they, they compete each other. And then the tension actually during the exam is quite high. And then uh, we can, there are a few cases that uh, involve, uh, I, I can say that, uh, uh, dengan masalah cubaan uh, uh, attempt to suicide and whatnot, 
I think this is a very serious and then we need to look after um, for this student. Um, there are many cases this year yeah. where students are trying to commit suicide. I can relate one case where one, one student was waiting beside the road, wanted to cross the highway, kill, uh, wanted to kill herself. So luckily our, our staff, one of our staff went there, spoke to her, uh, saved her, came back. So, so the, the, when you see them, kita rasa kesian juga tau. Because uh, you all see them in the class. Macam myself, Sharul Nizam, we see them after the class. Uh, so, um, the, 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 they are really uh, stressed. Whether this stress is warranted or not, kita, kita dah besar, we, we are mature, we can manage it. But at that level where they are going through this, uh, you know, adult food, relationship, families and all that, it can be very uh, burdensome for them now. So that, that's the uh, small reminders that I have to give it to my colleagues around here. Okay, let's let's move on. Um, the next one is, uh, okay, I do also receive uh, a lot of complaints. Normally these complaints, uh, I don't know why they send it to me. I think they also send it to uh, Prof. Camila as well. But normally what we'll do is we'll push it to the uh, uh, Dekan or, or the related party, unless it is a criminal offence, uh, we'll take it up as a tata terte. But uh, but many of them, uh, some of them, some of the challenges are difficult to understand. Lectures, family issues, financial issues, of course, can't afford data, computer tablet. They may afford data, but computer tablet, uh, food. You see. Um, they, they, they have uh, issues with food, getting on time and all that. And many of them uh, go by by 10 to 15 ringgit per day, uh, punya, punya budget, which is quite tough actually. So many of them may not eat uh, uh, good food every day. Some of them uh, may skip, many of them may skip lunch. Uh, they will uh, have a, a bit heavy, uh, sorry, uh, skip breakfast. Huh? They left lunch, maybe by design sometimes they sleep late, they wake up late. So these are the items, you know. So some of them may attend your class, class without breakfast, without even a coffee. So they may feel um, sleepy and all that. So this is something that you, not to say that we have to provide a breakfast for them, but uh, just to give you some feedback on this. Huh? All right. Um, now I can see my good friend here, uh, Siti Vinayakam here. Uh, uh, how are you, sir? Professor Siti. Hi. <laughs> good afternoon, bro. Good, uh, good to hear you. Uh, I, I should commend Maybe. your office uh, and also ADAC for initiating this. In the past, we all, always see students as like a highway passing through a toll gate, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. hardly notice who actually has gone through this campus and and now we are actually acknowledging they are very important part of our own life as well yeah. and uh, you know to be a, a co you know a co creator of prosperity on both sides i think it's very rewarding so what you mentioned there is actually is good to hear uh, that at your office you are seeing this, but unfortunately I can tell, uh, you know, by the time this message come to the departmental level, to the lecturer's room, it's somehow lost and we go back to that same old way of treating them as subjects. And I think this is very sad, you know. Uh, we still, you know, we're still trapped in the old dogma of university as the master disciple uh, concept rather than as a as a kind of you know uh, investment institution where people invest their life and we give them a good return you know so in the in a, in a way that we also feel good that we actually transform some people's fortune right so uh, i i would like to just share one point that i think which probably you know will make sense uh, we evaluate people individually, we grade them, we give them a CGPA individually, and we create an individualistic, you know, uh, graduate. But in reality, you work with people, you collaborate to, you know, to, to, to make a project successful. Your family is a, 
is a society. But, you know, very few opportunities for students to work in a group, to be evaluated as a group. And those who have more can share with those who have less. Okay? We don't give this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, model a chance to, you know, to be practiced. We treat everybody must contribute, but as you rightly pointed out, not everybody have the same access to knowledge or even access to time. Okay, so uh, so I I have experimented this uh, this concept kita jaga kita. So when we break up uh, group uh, students in groups, the aim is to actually to create this uh, shared prosperity concept. Those who have more who can have uh, access or you have you are slightly a bit ahead in the knowledge, you should play a role to actually bring up your team. Okay? Without thinking that this is mine, this is yours. You know, very early we tell them, you know, look after your people, your community, your group, whoever they are. Some may work, some will work for this group, some may take advantage. That's the role of the leader in the group to empower them and this is also part of the character building you know people will feel guilty if they feel that they are taking free lunch so i think students uh, you know can work better can can even empower their peers because they are in the same wavelength in that particular uh, you know point so i think that is what i would like to share but i hope that uh, HEP and uh, dnc ana will look at assessment they actually see collective success, collective CGPA. So people will be seen as successful community rather than just uh, uh, trophy students. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Prof. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Jack. I think very good. I think uh, Prof City is always uh, a very refreshing uh, uh, in these ideas. Uh, good to have you, sir, here. Okay. I have. Uh, 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 okay. The next one is. Okay, let's see. Huh? Okay. Now, my own experience as a PNCP, uh, in summary, is like this, uh, you know, my perspective changed. Uh, I find students just like our, just like my own kids. This is my family. Can you all see the slides? Yes, bro. Okay, this is my, that's yeah, the, yeah. my left is my daughter. That's me, that's my wife. Uh, the, 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 the Paling Ujong is my eldest, the second son. So, um, so um, uh, they have their own life and activities. Uh, they have own issues and uh, throat tantrums, just like our kids. La. So I have to show. So why I say this, uh, this is to just to reflect what I do. Sometimes, you know, they will complain. They will put us in trouble. They will complain to the KPT and all that. But then uh, I tell myself, you know, what they're doing is actually just like our kids, la, you know. Uh, they will be kids. But what will happen is that when they go out from here, when they graduate, some of them have come back and, and, and be a different person and they will... Uh, you know, they will say, Sir, sorry, uh, I did this last time and all that. And we receive a lot of, while we also receive complaints, but we see a lot of good wishes about people, about lectures. So the good news is that there are many good lecturers, many lecturers with empathy outside that. Many of them have gone uh, out of their way to give even money and all that. So that's that's the best thing that, uh, that, that these jobs brings me. While we have some issues here and there, but we also see, uh, especially now in PKP, many people come up and assisted. But the real assistance can come in the classroom, okay, where you try to understand them. Many of them, like what uh, Prof. City said just now, they have genuine uh, some some uh, some have higher knowledge. Some they may have some weaknesses here and there. So it's our job to make sure that. Either they get this value from us or from their peers or from their self-learning by the by the work that we give them, by the exercise that we give them. So so put your that as your target, you know, not just passing them, but am I imparting the knowledge that I'm supposed to give them, the value that I'm supposed to give them like that? Now, when we uh, get this uh, Tata tip case for copying, when we find, basically, uh, if they are taught well, if the values are there, many of them don't do that, you know. So in our profiling, we see that, uh, we can see some profile, actually, those students who copy. 
but sometimes it's also depending on the values that it is imparted down there in that 14 weeks so uh, that's what i can see now i can see mohammad azam here azam you are there right pengetua kolej 9 yeah 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 i'm here yeah. azam is very special now now he is housing uh, about 700 students today uh, those who come back uh, from uh, uh, home so we put uh, these students in this college before we dispatch them to other colleges right so probably you can share your experience in managing this number of students now quarantine them feeding them making them they they don't go out and all that maybe you can share some experience uh. so far alhamdulillah prof apa has been very easy because you know we only have one one gig going in and out so you know they not they won't be able to go out anyways and then we do have a lot of apa uh, poly banton around anyways but having said that kind of within the college uh, right now they are they are pretty much free to roam around the college though can okay, you know they are adventuring and and finding out and exploring what's going on within the college you know what what kind of facilities we have and things like that mm-hmm. so you know you get to see a lot of students on the ground outside the buildings can you know jogging you know walking with their friends and sometimes um, you know having discourses and what not um but you know yeah there are some worrying things now, such as you know food and things like that but you know we are we are managing and then you know we are also getting um cafes from other colleges to do deliveries as well and then you know some of the students also order from outside so um uh, you know that that somehow rather mitigate our issue um uh, besides that you know um in terms of um students health and safety can you know uh, um, it's pretty much um, something that we look after even during normal times can you know for now because they've just got in uh, and then you know in the last uh, batch that uh, came through we didn't have much problems <clears throat> there were a few minor um, health uh, issues that we dealt with uh, but nevertheless you know, we didn't uh, we only had one depression case you know but we we uh, uh, we, we addressed that are you, are they we, be back to the campus or not yeah yeah they they, they uh, all, all of these students will, will be going to the campus anyways later on no are they happy to be back yeah they look very happy bro <laughs> they do look very happy why they happy why they happy yeah because they get to meet their friends and whatnot that they they uh, they have missed for quite some time and i think that that is part of the uh, sanity thing and you know when they are at home i'm pretty sure that they get a bit depressed as well because they wanted to see their friends they're very social and social people can so up uh, over here you get to see them together with their friends walking in there some some of them eating together again you know so there is some spark of normalcy in there you know even though we are quite worried with the covid-19 going on but nevertheless you know it's a bubble within the college right now and you know um we've uh, been reminding them constantly you know to look after the SOPs so yeah hopefully nothing happens uh. <laughs> but you know as far as um depression and and you know their 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 sanity and things like that can you know nowadays for now we don't see uh, much yet because they 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 are here for a short period of time but previously you know we've seen a lot of cases uh, students trying to kill themselves you know overdosing cutting themselves and then we you know we got their families to come in we contacted medical um, uh, practitioners we also got uh, some really really um, caring lecturers to come in and, and help them as well so you know so far so good um, we've never had anybody you know dying on get on, on uh, in coach milan just yet lah you know but uh, that, that's as far as i know for now amila okay good <coughs> good okay just for everybody's information and uh, this is small information today today is the first time that we have zero case uh, covid case in the whole campus uh, very good uh, student uh, including staff so we hope to maintain it that we are the chairman for covid management committee so today is the zero day uh, and uh, hopefully we can keep that that way lah huh? Okay, a uh, little bit more, uh, my own experience, okay. Uh, okay, so now, uh, uh, for your information, uh, uh, election is coming. When election coming, HEP is always under pressure. There'll be a lot of things posted on the uh, social media. And for your information, uh, uh, what happens outside is actually reflected inside. We have six political parties. a political party aligned to amno that is a political party aligned to pkr that is a political party uh, we call it persatuan but essentially they are political party and it is pretty much the same outside we have a coalition government in um 
uh, where the, uh, Azik is our, our leader, is a very responsible person. But uh, for your information, uh, they have direct contact with the Prime Minister even. Prime Minister see them quite often. After uh, the students can actually vote in uh, general election, the student becomes some uh, community that the ministry is really, really concerned about. Anything that they complain, they'll come back to us. So I normally receive lots of emails, not emails, WhatsApp, huh? middle of the night. So um, there is a bit of politics uh, happening in the campus. Students are aligned to political parties. Uh, maybe at the faculty level, you, you may not realize, but in HEP, this is our worrying, most worrying time, the election time. But that's when they're trying to show that they, are, they, are, they can stand up to the management, they can request for reduction in the fees, they can request this and that. So normally, uh, we are very worried, like even the college uh, uh, masters and all that, they're very worried this time. But not to worry, uh, many of them has been, uh, has been, except for one or two incidences. But uh, currently now, we, we subscribe to giving them freedom, uh, giving them, uh, we empower them. Of course, we still have, uh, we are managing them, they are disciplined and all that. Uh, this is something that they can look out for during the election. Now, uh, sorry. Okay, uh, major issues, uh, disciplinary. Uh, recently, uh, we, we also have a few, uh, just for your information, uh, we, we are now looking at cases where I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's a mathematics subject where the students can submit the question to a, to a, to a, if I'm not mistaken, to a homepage somewhere and get the answers for small fees. So this is something that we are, we are, we are facing. Yeah? So majority is either plagiarism, copying, court for copying, and some uh, sexual harassment case. Uh, other than that, uh, very rarely theft and all that. So, so, so we don't we don't have a theft issue uh, much among the students, which is quite good actually. Uh, you know, we have more than twelve thousand students, but majority comes from here. Fighting we don't have at all. This is something positive to celebrate. Uh, racial problems or among students we don't have at all. Uh, so while we see some plagiarism case, some copying and all that, sexual harassment, uh, few cases, but we have to be proud of our students uh, that we don't have fightings and things like that. They are, they, we, we, our students are behaving, behaving in, that, in that sense. So uh, any questions uh, on, this, uh, on this side? Dr. Adib, are you here, sir? So, yeah, okay. Ah, I can see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you, uh, Adib, you want, yes, you yes, want to prof. share? You, okay, I'm sharing a, 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 a class with uh, Adib uh, this semester. Probably, Adib, you can share some, some of your experience, how we treat students and all that online. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, for the students, uh, usually for, uh, especially for uh, uh, project design, they are very active to do teamwork. And sometimes we can see they have like uh, special things they want to ask us, but uh, they have uh, go through so many details. So what we need to show them or, or to guide them is only uh, what, uh, how to become smart, how to think out of the books. Because until now, I remember uh, Prof Aziz when he ask a student to not use traditional. You have to add novelty to your uh, uh, project. So that's why we introduced something called uh, uh, microwave uh, assistant reactor, something like that. So we, uh, the, the most important point is to teach a student not to do the calculations, is to how to think in order to achieve the novelty and to think out of the box. So, but, but overall, Students are very happy with uh, with the supervisors, especially if the supervisor keen to ask about them and uh, celeb uh, celebrate with them uh, in any uh, like, uh, for example, uh, occasion or um, happy news that they have. So that's why 
we have to be uh, social with the student at, at the same time. We have to support them at any time. Sometimes we uh, even prof uh, or me contact them at uh, very, for example, at night or morning at any time. So we tell them, OK, this presentation is not maybe you need to practice more. Come tomorrow and we park another time for you. So the students will be very appreciated and therefore they become more ready and there and therefore at the end they become very happy. So that's why if we keen for our students, students will also keen to satisfy us and make us happy and also they will be happy at the end. Thank okay. you. So basically, yeah, if we if we if we make them see their potential, if we if we make them uh, see that they can do better things they will be also very happy with their output and the commitment will be there. At first, of course, they didn't like it the way that we are managing them, but later they are very happy. And in fact, uh, in fact, they say that uh, they, after the presentation, they, they, they felt so happy because they could do something um, yes. better than the other students, something out of the box. So uh, if we capacity build them, uh, you, 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 you will love the product that you see. Okay, now let's move on a little bit more. Uh, so how they see us? Do they see us as a good teachers or individuals? So this is this is something that we need to ask ourselves. Huh? So it's not uh, our job. It's not just to go there and uh, deliver the slides and prepare the exam and, and pass them or, or fail them and forget about this. But are we uh, giving that sort of uh, value uh, we as a lecturer? See, sometimes there is a tendency to blame the system, blame the KPI, whatever. But end of the day, when you go to your class, you do best. Leave it, rest of the thing as a side. And there will be a lot of appreciation for that. And there will be, you you you'll be happy uh, with what you have done at the end of the day. The next slide is, uh, okay, these are the some of the examples of complaints that I received as a TNC. Teaching quality financial assistance, facilities, not enough rooms, buses, college place allocation, it's not fair, it's not enough, some bullying, okay, sorry, yeah, I put a double teaching quality, food quality in some of our canteen, high fees, and obviously Maya is another problem that we are trying to manage it slowly, and they want freedom, okay? So students want freedom of expression, they want freedom in, uh, when we design something for them, they want to say in it, uh, maybe uh, at the faculty level, you have not uh, experienced this, but in our level where we look at to, uh, student politics and all that, we I received this. But so far, it has been an uh, excellent experience for me. Now, uh, I'm coming to the end. Uh, I think it's almost one hour. So, uh, so I believe uh, uh, we should treat students the same way that you expected lecturers to treat you when you were a student then. Respect. Uh, you know, uh, answer their questions, give them value, make them better than when they come to your class uh, first. So when they leave their class, they should be better in terms of knowledge, in terms of value. That's what I believe. So I, 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 I'm, I also want to, uh, I also believe that many, many of you all will also have this uh, principle uh, as well. Now, uh, let us do some uh, some uh, before we sign off, uh, we do some this one. Do you agree with the stand before my stand? I don't know. We can start from Azni. Azni, are you there still? Yes, Prof. Azni, where are you from, Azni? Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I'm in, uh, from yeah. Faculty of Language and Linguistics. Linguistics. Oh, I yeah. Okay. So do you, yeah. do you agree with uh, what I uh, my stand is now? Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree uh, a lot. <laughs> Because uh, uh, especially on the uh, uh, the student facing problems like uh, uh, stress, mental, I myself face. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, how to say, directly uh, face the, the the students' problem. I mean, I, I was in Japan with my student, and and he she had that uh, very stress kind of problem. So we managed to handle things together, involving the parents also from from Malaysia. So it, I mean. All what you say, uh, I mean, we, we really have to take care of the students well. Yeah, it's not just teaching. And it can start with, with, with an individual, you know, forget about the system. Okay, system, we can, we can, 
we can comment about the KPI and all that. Yes, in, indeed, it is affecting all of us, what we do. But individually, I find, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, I take at least two, two lectures. Individually, you can do a lot of good work. You can, you can implement whatever that you wanted to do within the whatever system that we have. Do you agree with me, Asli? Yes, yes. Uh, nobody stops you from excelling. Nobody stops you from doing good lecture. No, nobody stops you from doing good tutorial. Nobody stops you from giving back feedback. Nobody stops you from being respectful to them and all that. So I believe we as individuals can still uh, do all those things that we talk about today. Uh, Correct. Hello, Raja. Are you there, sir? Do you agree with us today? Okay. Now, man, maybe we can ask Farah, the boss, uh, self. What do you think, Farah? Dr. Farah? Croc, that's me. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I think that all the points that you made about the students actually is something that is very, uh, sometimes us as lecturers forgot about them, the, the who they are actually. I like the slide when you show your family and you say that treat them as if they are your own children because we see them only a few hours in class and then that's it. And our impression is built upon what we see and in how we interact with them during that time, the three hour time. Mm. Now it's totally online. We don't really know them as a person, can Prof? Yes, so I guess, yeah, you, you, I like it. It's a very enlightening, a very interesting point. Totally agree with you. We need to really take care of them. Um, I'm just thinking of whether, um, uh, the, what kind of system we can help them yeah, I think something for us to reflect upon after this. Yeah. Uh, and I think, forget about the past, I think we look for future. Uh, I think the younger generation that we have now, you know that we have more younger generation now, I think younger generation is much more acceptable to changes. I think uh, acceptable to, 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 to implement those good things, uh, I believe. Uh. Okay, now, uh, <coughs> last, uh, second last one. Do you know your students? Let me ask this question. Do you think you know your students? Let, let, let us thank you, Lee. Yeah, Hello. Hello, yeah. Ah, I see. How are you? I'm uh, good. I'm from music department. Music department? Yeah, and uh, of course, I, I know my students, so uh, I, I mostly get uh, used to uh, more familiar with them. Mm. Mm. So do you, do you do you have a uh, what do you call friendly social discussion with them outside the classroom setup? Yes, beyond we use Facebook. So uh, some some uh, is very if uh, they have any question, they just uh, message me. Mm. Yeah. So so you 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 encourage communication uh, outside classroom. No more, because and uh, if I give them assignment, they. Um, might have a questions mm. so they use uh, usually use a uh, 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 Facebook messenger to contact me I see okay okay good good okay what about uh, for Linda for Linda can you share uh, something do you, do you think you know your students Indravati are you there Indravati And then, okay, um, okay. Um, anybody wants to uh, share something uh, before we go to the last slides? I can see yes. moment. Hello. Yeah. Uh, hello, Prof. Could I say something? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello, Prof. Uh, yes, okay. yes. Uh, Dr. Shamso from Biology. Oh, okay. Shamso, okay. how are you? Uh, tak, tak, uh, bukan saya lah tapi tapi student mengadu kat saya some lecturers dia punya slides memang cantik full of animations and blah 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 hmm. tapi bila upload to spectrum convert to pdf all this animation semua hilang hmm. and, and then it's always the animation is always uh, safe spf 
the last part of the animation the wording wording gambar yang melayang layang terbang terbang all did it, it it's not there so they only see it during the recorded lectures and such but when the pdf is uh, and then for my cell phone uh, in the beginning of the lecture pun, I kata, sorry student, my slides really look dull, just black and white because I realise some of you suka print out, print out my slides later on sebab kalau ada background colour-colour semua, kadang-kadang you turn out black and everything. So for me, I am uh, black and white, hanya gambar aja berkolor. So this is uh, something lah nak, nak, nak apa ni, probably can suggest to other lecturers juga. So some students mengadu kat I uh, <laughs> sebab takut that some of the lectures garang and macam tu. Uh, and be, bila tanya lecturer lah, tak apalah kalau dia orang tak nampak the animation so they are lost lah uh, tak, maknanya dia orang, mungkin dia orang tidur during the like, online live lectures kan so again, I have, kita pun kena consider lah sometimes during the live lectures internet dia orang slow down, putus-putus, uh, the coverage is not so good they can only probably tunggu bapa bawa pergi bandar, pergi, ba- pergi ke bandar baru internet kuat, baru bila they can download the lecture notes and such so this is a some of thing lah yang kita nak kena consider juga and, and another thing lah uh, uh, selepas insiden cikgu kena gelakkan <laughs> apa bercak, uh, sebutan bahasa Inggeris tak betul ni saya pun risau lah juga satu hari nanti TV panggil saya uh, interview live interview kan saya pun <laughs> dah biasa dengan main English student pun suka main English kan kita enjoy kita pun feel relaxed takut nanti the on, on live TV wo oh, apa ni lecturer ini sebenarnya yang mau cakap sebutan tak betul patut cakap main English lagi <laughs> itu another thing uh, the causes of people can can apa ni train us to speaking before we go live online and such and then we do have our apa faculty media kan media multimedia media and such I, I can remember the full word of that i mean can the what are the students assignment can they help the lecturers make proper proper uh video lectures and such i heard uh we see nak suruh kita buat micro credential videos to upload so that people will buy by uh to download our videos and then at the end of the videos we get they get certificates and such so at the moment my faculty pun macam macam apa oh you individual creativity masing-masing lecturer punya creativity so we might, we might end up dengan simple background simple lighting tak nampak professional and people might the the the, the people that pay for the video might give a feedback apa ni bayar mahal-mahal video quality audio quality picture quality tak apa cantik dan sebagainya so being a top uh, top uh, top 60 university kena jaga jugaklah benda-benda macam ni so ara uh, boleh can consider prof boleh consider all these things thank you very much alright okay uh, okay um Okay, I got one more uh, slide. I know it's almost uh, now. Uh, thank you, Daddy. Eh? Uh, do you know your students? Okay, why I ask? Okay, this question is done already. Eh? Now, um, let me ask you very frankly. Eh? Do you remember how many students failed your subject last semester? Mr. Yap, Yap is there. Eh? Yap, are you there? Hi, Prof. Yep. Uh, okay. Do you, do you remember how many students failed your subject in your subject last semester? Uh, I am teaching elective subject. Uh, fortunately, I know not, do not have students failing my subject. Most I'm of them doing very well. Interesting. What about Un Kaili? Zero. Zero. Okay. Now, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> no, it's not excellent because it is zero. You know, uh, uh, when students fail our subject, we must we must be uh, feeling it because their failure is your failure. I, I take it that way. So if, if students fail it, then you must be at least know why they are failing. If, are they failing? Possibly my questions in the final exam is not very clear. Are they failing because probably during my teaching, I didn't deliver some of the concepts well. So what I'm saying is that sometimes people don't even don't even bother to find uh, how many people fail in their subject. You know, I've had an exp- experience, so uh, this number of people fail in their subjects because they don't have empathy towards number of students failing. Finally, what we found was that they fail because they put the wrong marks. 
Maksudnya, you must have an internal uh, system to say, oi, how many people, four people, hey, why are they failing? Oh, they're failing because they didn't do well in the final exam. Why they are not doing well in the final exam? Oh, this particular question, all four, the, four of them failed. So this internal check and balance must be there, I believe. If not, we are not going to be good teachers and uh, I don't think uh, we'll give any value to them. I don't think we're assisting them, we're building a, a society that we want when they go out there. So that's, that's my only thing. So uh, be uh, mindful about what you do, uh, especially when they're failing. If somebody is getting A+, plus, I okay. But if somebody is failing, I want to pay uh, special attention to that. Okay, my last slide here. Do you, uh, sorry, what can you do for them? So normally uh, I receive, you know, proposes we should do this, proposes we should do that, proposes we should give them this. Uh, we only have limited uh, resources, of course, uh, monetary and all that. But there are a lot of things that you can do to students within the, the lecture period. Somebody is late for class, somebody uh, fails certain things, you can give them a second chance. Somebody not able to answer certain concept. Somebody raised up their hand and wanted to know something. So we can do a lot of assistance. We can we can ask them. Okay, last class. Did you all understand this or not? The tutorial question number seven. Uh, many of you all got it wrong. Why you got it wrong? Do you want to? Do you want me to go through again? That sort of thinking process must go on in the class. I believe. Okay, I think that's all I have. Uh, uh, my last slide. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will entertain some questions now. I think we are discussing a lot of things. Any feedback, any question, I appreciate it. Otherwise, we can end the session. Prof, saya nak tanya. Do you have any, uh, Azhar from EDEC, eh? do you have any um, insight into what their generation, our students right now, ni? What are their aspirations? Do you know what they want? Do you want to be what? Do we do we have that information or do we have that that no, idea? I have that information. In fact, I have a slide uh, on that. Sebenarnya, uh, uh, where we ask them, we we have data on it. What do you want to be? Surprisingly, you know, we think that they want to get bad job, right? Good job, right? Mm. Only only twenty percent of them they say they come to study to get better job. But, but the rest. Okay, the rest. Uh, okay, if I may, I can actually uh, with a. Uh, okay, uh, I can. Um, hey, where, where is the? Where is the? So we ask them question. Why you come to university? Why you come to university? Right. This is the question we ask them. This is only for last year, uh, the first year students. So we thought that many of them will come here to become doctors, engineers, and all that, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, um, I, I can remember. Prof, yeah. are, you, are you sharing a document instead of your email? I cannot, I cannot uh, find the... Uh, wait, you, maybe you can I share first because you are seeing your email right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm seeing. Uh, uh, wait, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, wait, uh, if I can get this. Are you seeing my slide? Yes, you am uh, well. Yes. Uh-huh. So I'm sure you're seeing all this, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, we are seeing all the percentage. Oh, favorite food. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, you want to see this? Uh, okay, favorite food, huh? the local food. So these are all something that, okay, men not playing sports, sleeping hours, hobbies. Uh, these are hobbies. Uh, okay, interest. Volunteerism is number one, you know, their interest. Can you see now volunteerism? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. What they aspire? Mature thinking. They want to be thinking maturely. Mm -hmm. Academic excellence. Knowledge. Healthy lifestyle. Holistic. Spiritual. So this is something that they aspiration. What they advocate. Okay. They want fairness, you know. They advocate fairness. Life balance. Environment. Equal right. Freedom of speech. So this is this is from them, okay? Okay, knowledgeable, rich in soft skin, 
holistic individual getting a better job. See, getting a better job is only 20%. So they want, they want to be knowledgeable. So uh, they are ready for the modern life. Are we ready for them or not? Mm. See, sometimes we wrongly we think that they come here to get a job. And the only thing that we measure is employability, right? But actually, these kids are thinking a bit differently than, than what, we are, what we are thinking. So these are something that I'm privileged to have. La. So maybe... This, yeah? Yeah? This, is, this is good, Prof, because um, we know that we are actually uh, training job creators, mm. not, not workers, not future workers, because we are so... Um, Attached, maybe because from our our zaman when we were student, we were studying to get a job. But the students that we are looking at right now, we want them to be job creators. So it's not about the job skill so much, but more of how to work with people, how to you know be fair, how to communicate effectively, you know how to create value. So those are the things that if we don't realize, then we don't put it in our curriculum. We don't put it in our teaching pun. Kita just aja. Uh, content, content, content. Lepas tu, student tak click. They cannot, they, they cannot um, link what they want and what we are giving to them. So they will feel that I'm doing this just so that I get a, a CGPA of 3.7 above. That's all they want. Yeah. Yeah. I something think the uh, uh, proximity tadi, maksudnya kan the students are ready to change. You know? The students are ready for the futuristic uh, ni. Tapi are we ready, you know? So we, we, I think there is a mismatch between what we think is best for them and what they think is best for them. So how we bridge it, this kind of sessions, I dare, all this will help. So I hope uh, today's uh, session is a bit eye-opener for these those who attended today. And uh, if there is anything else, then I can, I can, all right. Maybe another thing we can uh, give um, the head of departments to share the every intake punya background before we start the semester. Okay, first year tahun ni macam ni, you know, what are their backgrounds so that when we... The deans. Uh, maybe. The the deans, the deans. Okay. Uh, uh, Prof, uh, can I say something? Yeah. I'm um, Siti Hajar Halili from Faculty of Education. Mm. Yeah, Siti Hajar. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, I just want to share my experience when I conduct uh, my uh, teaching and learning process, especially uh, during pandemic, uh, COVID-19. So it's all, everything is remote learning. So what I did is that um, it is very important to analyze your students. So I use, um, I apply this one uh, instruction design model, uh, which is much more related with the online learning. Uh, I, uh, it is known as uh, a sure model. So the most important A is analyze your student. So when you know your student background, analyze your student, so you can know, you can understand your student and then you can teach your teaching and learning process effectively at the end, um, the learning outcome. And when you analyze your student, what I did is that I will um, not um, giving them a very like, uh, it's, it's just like a simple survey. Just want to understand their background, what their academic, academic background. And the most important thing is because um, faculty education, so uh, perhaps we want the students to become a teacher one day. Okay, so we, I, I will ask them about their teaching philosophy. So when I understand their teaching philosophy, then I know, okay, my student, what is their need? So what is their expectation and what will give them some aspiration? And then based on the instruction design model, the assure one, and then at the end, we have the E, A-S-S-U-R-E. The last one is E, it's your is evaluation. So evaluation means that at the end of the course, okay, we do have the C-test, right? The C-test and some, some of the students, they will give their comments. And then based on the comment, then we can try to evaluate and review again, okay, our course, is it uh, why the student feel like just now what Prof mentioned, we need to um, justify, you know, uh, get the idea, review again our course so for, for in the future so we can um, uh, do something to enhance or improve our teaching. And uh, as for my um, faculty, okay, because we have different cohort, like for example, sometimes I have to teach a TESOL student and then sometimes the pendidikan science. Uh, they come to the, my faculty and then uh, I also have to teach early childhood students and the way of uh, presenting your slide also must be something different. Okay? Uh, especially for early childhood students, my slide will be like something like very colourful, you know, how to attract them, uh, to focus on my slide and then give them something like fun learning spirit, you know, and then colourful something and then for the 
uh, pendidikan student, okay, uh, my slide will be something like more to diagram or take table, just show them table. And for my uh, I'm a postgraduate student, okay, because they are adult learners, they're working adults, okay, their aim and object to join university is something different. They're not postgraduate student, they are, uh, they're not undergraduate student, but they are postgraduate student what so what i do is that i have to understand so uh, especially uh, uh, their their career background okay um what is their expectation so the most important thing you have to analyze your student and my slide for my uh, postgraduate student is only i use uh, two colors combination of colors which is like just now uh, someone uh, mentioned about the color black and white because uh, postgraduate student, they are adult learners, they are, they are focused for the multimedia learning. Uh, they can only focus on two colors, black and white. So my slide will be black and white because it's afternoon class. So I don't want them to be in the la la land. So they have to focus on me, focus on my voice and also focus on my slide. So as a lecturer, it's not only individual. You have to teach your student, but you have to really understand your student. That is just my sharing love, Prof. From uh, Faculty of Education. That's the whole idea today. Okay, that's a that's a beautiful uh, conclusion and remark. Uh, so, can we, uh, if there is no uh, any, uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Sophia. Hi, Prof. Um, my name is Amira. I'm also from ADEC. I'm standing in for Dr. Sophia. Her connection got disconnected. Uh, it's it's very unstable. So, thank you, Prof, for that really wonderful sharing. I think it's really opened up our eyes about learning more about our students. Um, and I, I personally actually feel that it's a very, very important topic because you know, at the end of the day, the students is why we're here in UM. And so we have to look after them um, as best as we can. And you know, it, they are facing as much as we are facing a lot of stresses, we are facing a lot of difficulties, our students are probably facing more. So really, really appreciate Prof for you sharing about that. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks, Prof. <laughs> Thank you also to all of uh, everyone here who joined us and those who participated and shared your views and shared some of what you are doing and also, you know, sharing ideas that maybe we can perhaps try out that would hopefully be useful to all of us and hopefully benefit our students at the end of the day. Uh, before we close off uh, our session today, just a couple of reminders. Um, firstly, uh, please everyone do fill up the feedback form that ADEC has provided. It is in the meeting chat uh, and Ms. Umu will share it again. Because today's topic actually touches very much on students and very heavily as well, not just on you know students overall, but also on how we treat our students, how we approach our students in the classroom and our teaching and learning. So today's uh, webinar, actually, I think, uh, I don't dare to promise, but I do believe that this is a webinar that we can consider as a teaching and learning professional development webinar. So hopefully if you do sign, uh, fill in the feedback form, we will be giving you a certificate of attendance and hopefully that certificate of attendance might be something that you can use for your new KPI pointer system. Uh, some of you may realize that we now need to attend at least two teaching and learning professional development, which means at least two teaching and learning seminars or webinars or courses not just from ADEC, from anywhere, but of course ADEC is supporting lecturers by providing these teaching and learning webinars. We'll be doing that throughout the year. And I guess we're kind of like starting with it um, today. So please do fill up that form. And also uh, before we go off, uh, just because it very well fits into this topic, we are going to be playing a video that some of you may have already seen. It's called Dr. Joe, the student oriented lecturer. If you have not seen it yet, do stay back for a few minutes just to watch that video and hopefully that might also bring it all in um, about how important it is for us to actually pay attention to our students and to really put ourselves in their shoes. So once again, thank you so much, Prof Aziz. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a uh, great semester. Okay, Amira, yes. Yes, Prof. There are some, uh, there are some uh, chat uh, questions. Oh, sorry, Prof. I did not notice that. Sorry. Thank you, Prof. Never mind. If, if I have not answered some of these things, we can take it up offline. Okay. Okay. We can do that. Yes. So we will officially close, but uh, definitely we can take it off offline. And I, would you be wanting to stay on, Prof? Ah, probably. Okay. Okay. All right. So we will play the video. 
we'll officially close and then anyone who wants to stay back and talk to Prof can do that. Ah, first day of lectures. I'm really quite excited. Can't wait to meet the students. I've got my notes. I know the subject like the back of my hand. Hmm, what could go wrong? Class, here I come. Hello, good morning. Uh, I'm Dr. Johari. You can just call me Dr. Joe. And I will be your lecturer for this subject. If you don't understand me, just feel free to stop me and just raise your hands, okay? Right. Uh, anyone here doesn't understand me? Wow, that is quite a lot of you. Oh well, we'll just work around it, okay? Minutes? Yes, Badru. Come, come in. Go. Yes, Badru. Uh, how can I help you? Um, it's about the group assignment. Mm -hmm, okay, the group assignment. So, how's that coming along? Any problems you're facing? Yeah, I don't have a group. You don't have a group? How come? How is that possible? There's so many students in your group or in your class that you can just create a group with. That's my problem. No one wants to accept me. Well then, this is something that we need to look into. These are just some of the challenges that international students face in our classes. We as lecturers and staff of University of Malaya have a role and responsibility to make a positive learning environment for all students. Here are three simple tips. One, put ourselves in the students' shoes. See our class and UM from their perspectives. Some international students may face language and cultural barriers. These are problems. Sadly, some may come from conflict regions and be dealing with loss and trauma. Others, like many local students, may be facing financial hardships. Two, be responsive and answer students' questions. If possible, consider their requests. Three, if we can't help the students ourselves, direct them to someone who can assist. This can be as simple as helping a shy student find a group if you assign group work to your class, or telling a student which office to go to and where it is if they need help with administrative matters. Let's be positive role models for intercultural relations and help make the University of Malaya student experience a positive one. Um, okay, I guess uh, this is actually the, the, uh, the official end of the webinar, but um, let me just check if Prof Aziz is still available to answer some of the questions. I believe Prof is uh, trying to contact uh, us at ADEC right now, so I'm just going to scroll through some of these questions. Um, we've got a pretty interesting question here or comment from uh, Dr. Uh, Elaya Elia Raja. And uh, if Prof is able to come back, I'll see whether Prof can answer the question. Uh, Prof Aziz, are you there, Prof? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, everybody. Sorry. Um, I just got word. Uh, Prof. Aziz is actually unable to join us uh, for question and answer right now. I'm very sorry that we didn't get to do that just now. But as Prof. said, uh, we can continue this online. Oh, wait, there is Prof. He's back. Okay. Yeah. Prof, welcome back. Sorry, I thought you weren't coming back. So thank you so much, Prof. So are you okay to answer some questions yeah. now informally? No problem. Okay, all right. Thank you, Prof. Would you like me to go through the questions or do you have any specific questions that you want to get to first? No, no, you, 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 you moderate it. Yeah. Okay, all right. That, the, that's great. So um, there is one comment, actually. This is from Dr. Ela, uh, Elayaraja, I think from the Institute of Mathematical Studies. And he says that um, when he asks his final year students, actually, they are very worried about job employment, um, despite the fact that we did learn earlier on that students are actually here, not just, uh, you know, to get a good job, but for a lot of other things. So do you have any comments on that, Prof? Okay, job job market, okay. Sekarang ini memang lah, we have to say that because of this COVID, we are hovering about 82%, 82%. But having said that, um, they may not get into something that they, they, they studied for, but to get a job, uh, it is still there, I believe. You know, so I, I would think that the students should take it not, uh, they can start a job, uh, probably not in their area. So I want to become a chemical engineer. I may not become a chemical engineer, but rather than waiting for chemical engineer to job to come, I can go and become a sales engineer, say for example, somewhere. And don't take that as a lifelong things that you're going to do. So if I take, okay, I'm going to try this six months. So you won't put much pressure, you won't put much pressure on you. I'm just going to go there and learn some skills or whatever, negotiation skills, or whatever. So that's what I will do. So. My my thing is that jobs are there, but you not may not be in the area that you 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 wanted to be or you aspire to be. Pick up something that is closer, uh, with the mindset that okay, this is going to be temporary, six months. Where my intention is to get some money, yes, of course, but to also learn about employment. I think that's that's my this one. So job is there in my opinion, and it it will it will it will get better. Yeah, inshallah, hopefully, inshallah, it will get better. So I guess in the meantime, our role as, as lecturers, our role as educators is to actually get our students to open their minds and also um, to reassure them, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to add, let's say, for example, engineering students, we teach them art core engineering, but actually what we are teaching them is attributes, problem solving, uh, synthesis, investigation, use of modern tools, communication, working in group, sustainability, project management, all this. So we are teaching them attributes. And with these attributes, they can even go and work as an administrator. You get what I mean or not? So, uh, and then, okay, eventually they, you want to become an engineer somewhere. But meanwhile, you can position yourself somewhere. So it's a mindset change, in my opinion, my personal opinion. I mean, some may have different opinion, but I think uh, I would take that. That, that approach. Thank you, Prof. That's an important approach, um, changing people's students' mindsets and our mindsets as well. So I'll move to uh, another comment here. This is actually from Prof. Siti. Uh, Prof. Siti just mentions in the comment that UM should invest in educational media production and broadcasting facility, um, sort of like have a UM Edu Media Corp uh, as part of brand value. <laughs> Do we have money for that, Prof? Actually, we have Radio Malaya. The students uh, students uh, run uh, this one, but I don't know uh, what exactly uh, is meant here. Uh, but I think uh, probably what he meant is production of uh, materials and things like that, educational material and things like that. I think uh, it is not uh, my portfolio or whatever. We can actually uh, join together and have a strong brainstorming session. What he means and all that. So if if it's something that so we want to reach out, you know, see in the in the in the in the in the past it's a confined to a classroom, but it's not so. And whatever that we generate in a classroom in that one session actually can be captured for life. So this is so we can design something around it. So let's have a discussion on this. I'm I'm willing to support. Uh, sometimes it is not the finances, you know. We can even do it with our existing I mean uh, you know existing uh, resources that we have. 
just maybe just have to direct it just have to give it a, a definition and structure we can do it so i don't uh, we have a separate discussion on this okay is uh, prof cp here um if prof cp is here or if not we will we will get the message over to prof cp later on yeah, thank I, you prof. i got it i got it yeah yes yeah oh all of you are still here is it oh thank you thank you very much <laughs> Uh, while we are at it, why not we take a group photo before we, we we always forget the group photo every single session. <laughs> Thank so you, Doctor Azhar. Uh, why don't we just switch I, on our cameras before we I get into it? I see a smiling face of uh, Adelia. Adelina, you are there. <laughs> let's let's switch on our cameras, everybody, so that we can have a quick group photo before uh, we continue. That's our weakness, kan, Amira? <laughs> we, yeah, we always forget the group photo. Thank you so much, Azza, for remembering. I forgot it this morning as well. I had a webinar this morning. Uh, this is really important, actually. Okay, so... Um, Hi, Rudin, you are there, I see. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> uh, we miss, uh, I miss you, uh, your name just now. Uh, yeah, uh, I, actually, I, I just came in. Uh, I came in uh, before. And I had to leave. Uh, I have a meeting with uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Singapore, and I just join in. Okay. Uh, I was very, very busy, Doctor Zahir. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, Umu, uh, will you be able to take care of this for us? Uh, yes, but can Doctor Zahir and Chinizam take uh, a screenshot too? Okay. All right. Thank you. And then we post it on the chat section. Yeah, maybe everybody can help take screenshots so that we make sure that we get, you know, everybody in into all the different screens. So, OK, uh, let, let's do three. Let's do three screenshots. Uh, would that be all right? Yeah. OK, oh, OK, Prof, this is going old school with this handphone. <laughs> OK, so we'll take three screenshots. Um, this will be the first one. I will count and then we will smile and then stop smiling and smile again and take another two. I will two. smile too. <laughs> smile okay. too. <laughs> all right, smile, Sahaja, all throughout as Dr. Alexis. All right, ready? Okay, ready, smile. One, two, three. Smile, Sahaja. Smile, Sahaja. Okay, I hope that uh, some people got that. So now let's do a second one. Another smile or continue smiling. One, two, three. And our last shot. One, two, three, and smile. Okay, I managed to get three screenshots. Uh, anybody who does have extra screenshots, please do share it. Uh, you can send it to ADEC, you know, via WhatsApp or email or chat. So thank you so much again. Um, Dr. Safia, can I hand this over to you? Are you able, is your is your mic okay now or still not yet? Uh, yeah, thank you, Amira. The connection seems, seems fine, okay, now. And uh, um, sorry for that. And Dr. Amira, thank you so much for taking over uh, from uh, from me just now. Um, so I think uh, there's no more Q&A sessions. I think uh, the session is over. So I would like to really, really thank to uh, Prof. Aziz. Thank you so much for coming to the M Star Series, the third one. Uh, <laughs> Is, uh, we, we, I, I think and I hope that we all uh, benefit from, from the sessions, especially that the, mes the semester is going to start next week. I think from now on, like uh, what Prof. Aziz said, that let's forget about the past, let's think about the future, whatever have, you know, have gone for the past, you know, stop thinking about it. And now we're going to go to move forward, to understand our students, to change the styles of our teaching and to... Um, you know, to, to, to basically know what the needs of the students and not just teach them our contents, but teach them to become humans in the future. So with that, thank you so much, Prof. Aziz, for the sharings. And also thank you so much for all the participants who participate with all the questions and sharings as well. So Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, I would like to announce that the session is now closed. Thank you. Very much. Uh -huh. Bye.